Over a thousand of the country's fittest men and women volunteered to take part in a reduced version of the SAS selection process. After a gruelling fitness test, 29 of the toughest have come to the Scottish Highlands. My name is Sergeant Eri Stone, but you will call me Staff. You are here because you think you're tough enough for the SAS. These people with me were and still are, and believe me, we will find out about you. Most of you will not successfully complete this course. To succeed, you'll have to push yourself harder, faster, and for longer than you have ever done before in your life. There will be pain. There will be suffering. This will be the toughest 10 days of your life. Let's start by having you look the part. Start stripping. You're going to be issued with everything you require. Food. Army issue smocks, trousers, sleeping bags, wet weather gear, and also a nice little tent to sleep in. Right, stand up and pay attention. You're going to get given a rifle now. Get the weapons. That rifle is your baby. The rifle never leaves your side. It doesn't go beyond an arm's length from your body. If you're going for a crap, you take your rifle with you. Right, relax. Right, I suggest you go off and get some sleep now, because I can assure you you're going to require it. Fall out. The SAS, for those of you who don't know, stands for Special Air Service, Britain, if not the world's most elite fighting regiment. The recruitment process is legendary as being hellish, both physically and mentally. Quite simply, they recruit the best of the rest of the forces. Now what we want to find out is if members of the general public, albeit very fit ones, have what it takes to pass the SAS selection process. How does this differ from the full SAS selection? Uh, the time difference. Um, mainly these people are going to do 10 days and SAS selection goes on for about six months. Uh, having said that, what they're actually doing, the actual put, uh, parts they're doing are realistic in relation to what the SAS would do on a certain day and exercise the SAS would do. These are realistic exercises. Mm -hmm. So these guys can take a lot of pride from getting through 10 days if any of them do? Yeah, yeah okay. they can. Can any of them? I'd have thought, yeah, some of them, uh, some of these guys are very fit, but they're fit for different things, and so you've got people here who are fantastic, sort of fairly short distance type runners. I, I think they'll have trouble, but there are guys here, you know, that are real endurance people, they've got a mix of power as well as strength, they know how to navigate, you know, yeah, I think there'll be some people get through and a lot that are disappointed. Being fit is only one aspect. Um, on this you're going to have to be really fit, but you also need the, the mental ability to go beyond what the body is capable of doing. You really need to push yourself. Get them up. Come on, you bloody! Come on, let's be hard when you get out! Your laces up later, get outside. You're 20 seconds. Move. Right, listen in. You get 30 minutes to be something to eat, get your gear together, and be stood back out here and parade. Move. Come on, I said, move! 
Each day the volunteers will be given army ration packs containing around 7,000 calories. Right, sorry for disturbing your beauty sleep. You're about to go on a little tab. It's called point to point. Watch to face that direction. Then it was underweight, made up with house bricks. These house bricks will remain in the Bergens at all time. Go. From those who attempt full SAS selection, only around 5% make it into the regiment. 29 of our volunteers begin the first exercise, point to point. Normally, on SES selection, point to point is done over Penny Fan. It's quite a famous. Uh, Wales, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a peak of the Brecon Beacons, and uh, it's well known by any SES member. And uh, unfortunately, due to the foot and mouth, we couldn't go there, so we had to find a, basically an alternative here in Scotland. So we're using Ben Lomond, which is fortunately much higher. How many do you think we'll lose? Looking at the group, I would think we're going to lose five. Five, six, maybe. Out of stamina, or, out, or do you think when they get to the top of it with the. With the with I the think they suddenly realise what they've let themselves in for. Carl Webster races to the top in just an hour and a half to be warmly greeted by the ex-SAS directing staff. Do you think soldiers walk around with green t-shirts on? I don't know. No, they don't. Okay, jacket on. Yep, put your jacket back on. The volunteers are given their second rendezvous point and a chance to see the northern face of the mountain on the way down. The field starts to thin out with endurance athlete Anna McCormack leading the women. I have just released another volunteer. She believes she is the last one up here. Over. Yeah, affirmative on that. They are soon to find out that coming down is almost as punishing as going up. <coughs> Webster, number five. Your next coordinates uh, are 368028. Carl is first to work out that he is going straight back to the top again. 368028. Okay then. Get a refill. Okay, by the way, okay, by the way when you climb the fence over there, you push your rifle through the bottom of the fence. So you owe me ten press that's when you get finish. Keep your rifle in your hand at all time. Okay. Anna has made an awesome push to 8th overall in a field of 29, but not without cost. And I've got a ligament in the top of my foot, which is really weird, which I've actually forgotten because it had just about healed up, which I pulled in the adrenaline rush. Your next grid reference is 368-028. I'm still bloody only 9.22 in the morning. I started at 3, but I'm fucking wet, tired, but you know what? It's all about keep on going on, and that's what I'm going to do. Can you show me on your map where you are?